All right, good morning, PT on Ice. Today is Monday, July 23rd. It is a little after 8.30. Gonna get the watch ready here. I uh, didn't think I'd be able to get on right at 8.30 here, uh, Eastern time, but uh, it worked out that I was able to. Going with the earbuds this morning because it is pouring rain and I am in the mobile studio. So, uh, so could be a little bit of a, a noise issue if I go with the microphone. So good morning, welcome, welcome. Um, I see uh, Brandon on there. Looks like maybe Colin is on there. So welcome, guys, and thanks for joining. Let's get right into it. So today we're going to talk about one of the greatest truths. Um, and if you've watched uh, this or, or seen the podcast before, hey, Colin, um, you know you may know uh, that, that I've alluded to this in the past. It's it's one of my favorite quotes of all time. Um, it is the beginning of a of an excellent book. And it's something that um, that I think everybody needs to sort of know and understand. And, and I think it's kind of the unique base of um, being a prevention and health promotion therapist. I really think that it's one of the absolute fundamental sort of philosophical pillars. And if you can kind of get that, you'll understand um, how this whole thing builds. So uh, I'm going to read the quote because I think that um, you really have to hear it in the author's words. Uh, oh, I should start the clock. There we go. Um, okay, so, so the author is a gentleman by the name of M. Scott Peck, and he wrote an awesome, awesome, awesome book called The Road Less Traveled. And, uh, and, and so this is the, one of the opening, if not the opening quote of the book. Life is difficult. This is a great truth, one of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult. Because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. So that is one of my absolute favorite quotes of all time. And it's, it's a, uh, a book that was turned on to me earlier in my career. And I think that it is absolutely fundamental. It's one of the most important things anybody can understand and learn. Um, and I think if you're going to be in the health promotion space, um, you have to live this. You have to exude this. This has to be everything you're about and, and, and you know, something that you take with you every day. And the reason why I think it's so important is because we know no matter what the situation we walk into, um, whether it be with the individual in front of us, whether it be the individual in the mirror, um, or all the way up to the greatest population society overall, we know that the circumstances are going to be less than ideal. They're going to be challenging. They are inherently not going to be perfect and smooth. They're going to be messy. Uh, they're going to be ugly. And no matter what we walk into, it's not going to be what we want. Right? What we want is simplicity. What we want is, is, is easy. What we want is, hey, I, I see how these dots connect. It's very simple. What we want are, are things to follow a linear pattern. A plus B equals C, and I can just kind of draw that extrapolation up to the top, and yep, that's where we'll wind up. Right? That's what we all want. That's human nature. It's, it's everything about uh, being in the prevention and health promotion space. And quite honestly, it's a huge fallacy. It's it's an absolute you know uh, you know you know fool's tale. I mean, it, it's chasing windmills. It's it's the idea that that somehow we're going to find um, one simple thing uh, that that does this. And and you know I know I've riffed on this before and I've kind of hammered this theme. But sometimes I feel like we need as a group as a whole uh, as people who want to you know sort of be in this prevention and health promotion space. We really have to sort of deeply buy into this. This has to be sort of deeply in our soul. Um, which kind of gets me to this next thought, right? And, and the reason why I bring this up is because we all understand inauthentic when we see it. We all understand a, a person or a system that is just trying to kind of like uh, get to the other side quickly, just trying to kind of you know push a sale or or or, or trick you into doing something. Everybody gets that. It, it, I mean, it's sometimes hard to see, um, but we see it all over the planet. And we also see the frustration with that. And so that becomes something that makes people guarded. It makes something, you know, pe people inherently don't want to trust. And, and so it makes it much easier not to put yourself out there. Now, if you kind of take that and boil it down to what exactly are we getting after when we're in the health promotion and prevention space, I mean, we're getting after change. That's really what it is. We're, we're trying to take one set of circumstances and, and hopefully make them better, but, it, but definitely make them different. Right? Like they're definitely going to be different. They're, they're not going to be what they were. 
And so that is the process of change. Like at its root, that is the process of change. Now, if we get caught up with our clients, with the populations we serve, or with ourselves, and, and, and this is a big, big warning flag. This is me waving like the huge warning flag in front of our faces because we are all people and we all have the tendency to do this. If we get caught up with the, yeah, it's not fair, um, you know, uh, th this situation is hard, um, you know, th this is not uh, going the way it should, if we get kind of bogged down into that, we will never, ever, ever actually get to progress. Because it's very easy, very easy for all of us to kind of say, well, that's not perfect, or that's not perfectly fair, or that person got an advantage that I didn't get. Um, so, so, you know, that's essentially what M. Scott Peck is saying. Like, once we just come to terms with the fact that, yes, like, that is true. Like, I can definitely think of people who have greater advantages than me, and I can think of countless people who don't have the advantages that I have. And that when we start to lay that out and just understand that it's real and it doesn't change, it's real, then we can go beyond it and actually say, okay, now let's actually make this better. Let's see if we can find a way to do so. So one of the things that, that I like and one of the takeaways um, that I take, I'm, I'm sort of taking a look at, at some of these books by uh, um, Nicholas Taleb. I don't know if anybody knows him, but he wrote a, a great book called Anti-Fragile. He's got kind of a whole series um, that, that you should check out. But Anti-Fragile is one of, I think, probably like his you know, sort of ultimate works. I mean, it's an awesome book, but he's got his most recent one, which is called Skin in the Game. Um, and, and, and I really like the idea of it. But one of the things that he talks about early in the book is the idea that if you're really going to be your authentic self, like if you're really going to get after change, if you're going to be a difference maker, whatever you want to call that, like you have to put your soul in the game, right? Like you have to be completely committed to the outcome. Um, and that, you know, he kind of makes the reference of an artisan and the fact that, you know, like the difference between someone who just sort of does something and someone who is truly an artisan, you know, a, a craftsman, like they have skin in the game because their entire brand is whatever that product is, right? That they can't avoid, um, you know, a, a failure because if, if, if it sucks at the end of the day, um, it's going to be a direct reflection on them and their craft. And his whole point is, is that when people live their lives like that, when they are completely committed, when they are all the way in um, with that true authenticity, uh, then, then it's, it's actually easier to perform because you won't sort of avoid simple barriers and things like that. You'll find a way to kind of deeply get in and do your thing. And so I think that's really what um, you know, uh, Peck is saying in, in, the, in the greatest, one of the greatest truths. And I also think that that is, as I said, sort of one of the deep, deep uh, bases of being a prevention and health promotion therapist. The idea that we are going to be asking people to make changes or we are going to be building systems, you know, if we go up that social ecological framework into bigger populations, we're gonna be building systems that are designed to help people make change. Um, and, and so all of that is under the premise of the circumstance of today is not what I want the circumstance of tomorrow to be. Now, we might be talking about behavior change. We might be talking about, um, you know, circumstance change itself. We might be talking about equity. Like, we might be talking about lots of different things. Bottom line is where our entire being is about change. And so if that concept is, is what we're really after, we have to be willing to go completely neck deep, to be put our entire soul into it, and get to the point where we're willing to say, hey, this is what, uh, this is like the center of my being. This is my authentic, 100% authenticity. So, so the final thing that I kind of wanted to sort of lay the foundation here, and then I'll give some examples, um, is I got a, a late uh, you know, text last night or, or a chat from, uh, from Colin, who I see is on there, uh, after reading you know, a post that he put in, uh, in the CERT grad group. So uh, for those who are not you know, the, the uninformed, right? So, so those people that take the course um, are put into a group uh, in, in something we call workplace, and, and there's a whole group that's just people who have graduated uh, the course. And there's a nice conversation that goes on there, and it kind of creates almost like a, a mini tribe of people who are sort of practicing this way and talking this language. Um, and, and he really made a point, and, and kudos to you, Colin, for this, he made a point about, you know, sort of the authenticity piece, right? Being authentic and kind of, you know, some of the lessons that he had taken away from, uh, from something that he had heard at, at his church. And, and, I, and I respect that tremendously because I think that that's the formulation, you know, in, in sort of watching what he's talking about and hearing what he's saying, you know, you can see kind of the, the dots being connected of how 
as groups, as societies, as tribes, as people, we can move toward change when we start to pick apart, all right, what is it that helps people change? And one of those things um, is the, the armor of authenticity. It's the idea that, listen, if I, if I am completely understanding that the situation will never be perfect, no matter what, it will never be perfect, then I can get over that and I can move on. I can say, well, listen, guys, it's never going to be perfect. Like, we're all cool with that. All right, now let's move on and go with what we do have. Let's work toward progress. So the examples of that that I want to give, let's start at the individual. You know, let's start where, where most of us are going to spend our time. Um, you know, I tend to call that lifestyle PT, but, but it's the idea that if I'm sitting in front of someone and someone has self-selected, I mean, to a certain extent, they've self-selected, they've decided they want our services, and they've jumped through the hoops to get them, okay? So there's all sorts of problems with that by itself. And we could spend an hour and a half talking just about why that whole idea is problematic, right? Why that's 15 barriers before a person can actually get to us if they want to you know, actually have help. So that, there's problems with that. But let's say they get that far and that's the circumstance we're in. We're now sitting in an imperfect circumstance with someone who has self-selected and jumped through lots of hoops and has the ability to pay for it, essentially, if they're sitting across the table from us in one way or another. Okay, So, so they've gotten that far. That's the circumstance we're in. And we often talk about helping a person live the best version of themselves. And that's a, a, something that we're seeing a lot more. I'm seeing that kind of thrown around a lot more, and it's refreshing. Uh, to be honest with you, you know, um, the, 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 when I first uh, started kind of dabbling with that thought in, in the PT world, that was a long time ago on a podcast very far, far away uh, with Karen Litzy, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and I got some backlash out of that, right? But the bottom line is, is that when we're sitting across the table with someone and they have now accepted the idea that they need to change, what have they done? They've accepted the concept that, hey, life is hard. It's not the way it's, it's the way it's working out is not the way I want to work it out, and I've got to actually get towards some change here. Now, um, the change that we bring to that person, the, the change that we want to then bring, is, is what? Well, typically it's going to be behaviors, right? Like let's control the things that we can control. You know, let's control the scenarios that we can actually control. And, and that scenario that we can control is our day-to-day -day actions. Now, can we control them fully? No. And are we seeing a lot of, you know, people talk about that? Well, you know, the circumstances as they might be and, you know, listen, this person may not have access or they may not have safe roads or they may not have, you know, the, the, the financial wherewithal. I get it. But there's always something we can control. You know, there's something that if we boil it down, we can control something. You know, it does not take much for a person to decide that they're going to march in place. If they are sitting in front of you, they can control that. Now, I saw somebody who did some work on addiction. Um, and, and, and by the way, if you really read about change and you really look into change, I mean, most of the best work has been done in the world of addiction, um, where we know that that's one of the hardest changes to make. And yet people do it all the time. Right. But if you really boil it down and you get down into it, um, you know, what they basically say is, listen, I don't care if you just set your alarm clock and get up the same time every day. If that's what you can tackle, if that's what you can take on, if that's what you can control in the circumstances that you can control. Other people have talked about the Zorro circle. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this or heard this, but the Zorro circle is the idea of, you know, Zorro was essentially a drunk and, and he was, you know, sort of like going to this, this master and going to teach him how to, you know, fight with swords or whatever. And so they put him in a tiny little space and they say, that's it. That's your entire space. Defend that space. And as he kind of does better and they, they, okay, now here's a bigger circle. All right, now defend that space. And then he gets a bigger circle. Okay, now defend that space. Before you know it, the guy's all over the place and he's able to defend a huge space. What is that? That's control what you can control and then grow out a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more. Now, if we were to look at that and say, yeah, but you know, here's all these circumstances that he can't control, um, he would never even start the process of change. To me, that is acceptance of the idea that life is difficult, that the circumstances will never be perfect. And yet, we can still take a positive step forward. Now, in many ways, that is the exact opposite of you know, what, what is sometimes called learned helplessness. And I think we have to be very, very careful with our empathy because our empathy can easily cross the line and get into you know, reiterating or what sometimes in addiction they call enabling uh, you know, a negative behavior. It happens all the time. Like, yes, we can make it safe for someone. But when we tell them, hey, the situation is hard and you know what? Like, no harm, no foul. You, you, you can't change that. Like, when we tell them that either in our body language or in our actual language or in our approach 
uh, we've now gone from empathy, hey, I understand the situation and I want to help you make it better. Like, I'm not going to make it better for you. I'm going to help you make it better. Uh, we've now transcended that and we've gotten into learned helplessness. Like, hey, listen, don't worry about it. You know, your circumstances are just too hard. So I'm going to take it full circle, right? I mentioned that Colin uh, saw something that, that in church or with a church group. I was sitting in church this Sunday and, and it happened to be, uh, you know, um, you know, a, a homily uh, by someone who was, uh, you know, do, doing mission work. And, and the story that really struck me in my one minute and nine seconds was that, that uh, you know, someone had, uh, he was talking about mission work deep, deep in Africa where, people, where, where poverty was a major issue, okay? And he was saying, you know, uh, that, that people who were the poorest of the poor um, were still finding ways to help their neighbor and still finding ways to give to someone who was slightly worse off than them. You know, that, that made me pause for a second and think about that, right? Like culturally, to me, that is life is difficult. That is an acceptance that, that, hey, the situation is not ideal and yet still finding joy uh, in their own circumstance and still finding a way to, to give and to extend themselves and do all that. Like that, that has to pause us for a second because sometimes I think we, we don't do that, right? We're not willing to say, hey, listen, life is hard. It was never meant to be easy. No one said it was going to be. Like, I don't remember anywhere in the rule book of life that says, oh, guess what? On page one, it says, it should be easy. Yours is hard. So you have a reason to be pissed. There's my, my number. And you can see I'm starting to get a little revved up on it. So it's probably a good time to stop anyway. But, but you get, hopefully you get my point. Because I think that's the basis, in many ways, the basis of change is acceptance. The circumstance is not ideal. It will be hard to do. I will still have to endure the difficulty if I want to actually make change. And as a group, we can come together and help that happen. Like if we can get that, if we can get that progression, then I think we can start to make change. Now, I'm not going to dive into going up the social ecological ladder because I'm already out of time. But the idea is, is that same concept of I can control my own little Zorro circle. What can I control today? Start with that. And let's work our way out from there. And the minute the thoughts creep into our head of, yeah, but that's not, whether it be fair or perfect or whatever the case may be, say, yeah, it's not. Life is messy. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be easy. It's always going to take effort. And I'll just kind of wrap it up with a shout out to everybody's buddy on this particular podcast, and that is Alan Fredendahl. So if you're watching Alan and you're seeing his posts and you're seeing the engagement he's getting from both the Summer of Move and some of his latest Facebook posts, you are seeing exactly the magnetism that goes with someone who is deeply, deeply living that authentic, this is hard. This guy is in front of our very eyes making an absolute transformative metamorphosis with his health. Okay, I mean, this is a new person. Now, this is inherently hard. But he doesn't seem to be phased by that. If you read the language in his post, it's, well, nothing left uh, you know, to complain about. Let's just do it. And gets out there and does it. Very, very impressive work. And I think what that says is, I'm not complaining about the situation. You know, I'm sure there are thoughts that creep into his head like, man, this sucks. Yeah, there has to be. Change is hard. But let's do it. All right, I'll leave it there. Hopefully that challenges them. Three minutes over. I apologize for a little bit of the timing. Uh, just remember, life is difficult, man. It's not meant to be easy. One of the greatest truths. Have a great Monday. Make it count.